Question seven, I think I've been wanting to do it for a while. Um, so this is actually one of the questions that's not from your textbook. I think I programmed it in because uh, it um, disappointed me that your textbook didn't have a question that related to Millikan uh, oil, oil drop experiment, <laughs> which is the experiment that determined the elementary charge. So. <laughs> So, so yeah, it's the question, so let me just read it through and uh, do it. It should be relatively simple. Uh, so the elementary charge E was determined in this, okay, all this setup. Um, so mist of oil is sprayed, uh, mass of the oil drop is determined by measuring size of the drop and its terminal velocity. There's a whole process. Um, I guess uh, what we'll take as given for our calculation is that we somehow know the charge of uh, the mass of the oil drop. Uh, because of the friction with the nozzle when the oil is aerosolized, some of the oil drops are charged by applying an electric field. Um, so yeah, these oils are charged. And in this region, they uh, there's no electric field on them. They just uh, behave like they are neutral. But once they drop here, they are influenced by electric field. Um, and Element charge so you observed, all other charges, say integer multiples, right? Uh, well, the mass carries a charge of four of these elementary charge. What magnitude of the electric field needs to be applied to? Oh, so um, I hope as you read through this description, some of that kind of sounds like something that you could have seen in physics 4A, mainly that this is a, a force analysis question because we are talking about mass and there's some gravity pulling the thing down which is how it reaches terminal velocity and once the charges are in this region of electric field then um, we have this uh, relationship between electric field and electric force electric force is the amount of charge times the electric field so uh, so in this question, I recommend you start out like with any other force analysis question with a free body diagram, uh, even though the setup here will end up being super simple. So you consider an oil droplet somewhere in this region. Um, let's uh, consider the forces on it. There's going to be um, gravity pulling it down. Uh, if it's uh, suspended, uh, between the two conducting plates, then it's resting, acceleration is zero, there must be some upward force, and the way to set up, oh, that must be the electric force. So that electric force is the amount of charge times the electric field. And since it's suspended with the acceleration zero, this must be true. These two forces must be equal to each other so that they can balance each other out and uh, give you nicely suspended oil drops. So looking at that, let's see. Um, so I know, let me just write out the amount of charge they gave us for E. And E is a physical constant. So I have this one equation. I think I know everything except for electric field, and that's what I'm solving for. So let's solve for that. Solving for electric field, I get mg divided by 4e. Um, good. So I think I can just plug in all the numbers. And as I'm plugging in numbers, I'm just going to make sure that all the numbers are in <laughs> basic SI units, as long as they are unit to work out. So mass, 2.5 times 10 to the power of minus 15 kilogram, that's basic SI unit, times um, g, uh, so 9.8 meter per second squared, divide by four times the elementary charge that I pro uh, programmed in earlier. And I just kept everything in basic SI units and I will trust that the this uh, Newton's per coulomb, which looks like a basic SI unit, involving Newton, uh, one of the derived basic SI unit, <laughs> and Coulomb, one of the basic SI units, gonna assume that it all worked out. So the answer here should be, 38 to 100 uh, newton per coulomb. Um, I think there are questions of this type where this is either kilonewton per coulomb, and soon after soon you will see like volts per meter. Uh, this is what I mean. Units can get complicated in uh, electricity and magnetism. I guess by complicated I mean 
there's more than one common way of expressing units. So Newton's per coulomb at this point I think makes perfect sense, you know, uh, especially with this equation in mind, um, where left hand side is in Newton's, right hand side is, is coulomb times, oh, so this must be Newton per coulomb. And uh, once we introduce electric potential, we'll actually be using volts per meter more. That's actually in practice more common way people work with electric fields. Okay, do question seven. Let's do question eight. Um, so it says, proton is suspended in the air by an electric field at the surface of a planet whose crev all right uh, uh what is the strength of this electric field that, that feels a lot like the question that we have done except without all the interesting detail about the millikan experiment but we'll treat it the same way so it is talking about um the situation that's described here you know suspended zero x acceleration a gravitational acceleration from which you can calculate gravitational force electric field, which is related to electric force. So it feels like a force analysis problem. So I will start by drawing free body diagram. On this free body diagram, I have um, weight of the proton, mg, pulling it down. And I guess I'm going to assume that the electric field is somehow set up in a way to make the uh, electric force pointed upward because that's the only way you are going to get the suspension of the proton. Um, and this will be uh, proton also has elementary charge E times uh, electric field. Okay, that's what I'm solving for. Okay, um, so since acceleration is zero, we can say these two must be equal to each other. Uh, solving for electric field from that, that's mg divided by E. And here this M is the electron mass. I hope I'm given that here. Ah, there it is. Uh, electron mass, sorry. Proton mass. Um, yeah, proton mass that's given there. So I'm just going to use that. Um, so um, proton mass, 1.6673 E minus 27 times G, 9.8 meter per second squared, divided by E, oh, elementary charge that I programmed it. Um, and they're all in basic SI unit. So when it's all done, I'll get basic SI unit answer. Um, yeah, 1.02. Uh, yeah, I think if you do one, it'll say it's wrong because it works on 1% precision. So 1.02 should be fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there are some questions where, so this, wait, what? what did I do wrong? Um, Oh, it said nine. I don't know why. It's a different planet than Earth. Um, all right. So, oh, yeah, yeah. So this is where, oh, this is a good demonstration. So um, this uh, kind of power, it's uh, chosen in a way. It's somewhere close to where it's going to be, but it's not guaranteed to be the same power of 10 as what you will have in the proper scientific notation where the mantissa is between 1 and 9.99, whatever, like, no, it's not that. So you have to, whatever answer you get, you have to express it um, so that it's such a number that when you plug it in here, that when you multiply by 10 to the minus 7, it's going to be the correct answer. So what I got to do here is take this, multiply by 10 to the power of 7. Then that will kind of cancel that out and it will give me this part. So, okay, 0 0.939, 0 0.40, um, 0 0.942, too late in the day. Um, so, okay, that is correct. Yeah. So, uh, so do watch out for that. A lot of the questions, especially while we are dealing with the static electricity, will involve scientific notation. And this part of the question, it's trying to help you so that you don't have to express this part in scientific notation but it also requires that you pay attention to this power of 10 and, um, you know, do it. <laughs> Take it into account as you're calculating the numbers. 